Hello you two, welcome to a new Unit 3D Space tutorial. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is add a crosshair and a overheating system for our weapons. Now, I noticed this last tutorial when we made the asteroids, that when we shoot, um, this is going to be a bit annoying for now, but if you watch, we basically we can shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. And it's a bit unfair because the, if players have faster clicks, they're going to just keep beating you over and over again it's not very good so what we're going to do instead is add an overheating system and a crosshair in the middle so this crosshair i've created will be of course i've put it in the wrong place i've put it in sounds but there look it's blue it looks quite nice i like it myself don't know what you think you can comment below if you like it so that made no difference whatsoever that's not fair but yeah there it is and then you shoot like that blah 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 when your weapons are overheated it'll turn red and play this sound. The, 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 all those will all be in the description to download. I'm going to move this crosshair to the textures folder. Perfect. So, easy, really, really easy to do. So, the first thing I'm going to do is go back to our GUI scripts and find our on screen actions. Perfect. So if pause active equals false, well we want it inside here, don't we? So in here, we'll just write crosshair, just like that. And up here, we're going to create a new GUI texture for it. So we'll type var crosshair current, and this will be, so this is your current crosshair, and it'll be a texture 2D. But we also have two crosshairs we want to switch between normal and overheating so the best way to do it will be to duplicate it and to type crosshairs and make it an array equal to new um, texture 2d 2 so maximum of 2 basically so crosshairs so we'll copy that and under here we'll just make a new GUI box so we'll type GUI.box rect and the best way to get it in the bang on center of your screen is to type screen dot width divided by two then you minus how large the image is by half so you could type minus i believe it's 32 64 64 yes so minus 32 so basically screen dot width is your width so the default one i'm using is 1024 then divide that by two that'll give you a center but don't forget on your image, if I just click play so I can show you something. This, say we've got a pause button, the pivot is not in the middle. The pivot is where it moves from. The pivot is to one side here. So if we minus it by 32, it'll be in the centre of that because it's half of it. If you don't understand, I'll show you later. But then you do that again for the height. So screen dot height divided by 2 minus 32. And then we'll say 64, 64 for the size. Again, like I said, if you don't understand the mass behind that, I'll show you in a minute. And then we'll put crosshair current for the box. That simple. So, the pivot point of an object is where it moves from. So say we've got this pause point here, this pause button. Most pivot points are in the middle. So if you move it, it'll move from the middle. And as you can see, it's updated, but not fixed. So it'll be from the middle. But in Unity, all GUI stuff the pivot point is in the top left corner that's another common one as well like your mouse cursor if you look at your mouse um, imagine it is a box around it that top corner is where you click that top left corner right there you can see right there look it's a box but the pivot point in unity we need to get it back to the middle so it's in the actual center so if it's at the top you move it to the center of the screen, so imagine that's where it is. You minus 32, which is half of the image, so it halves the image, then half the image on the width, center of it. Really simple. So we're going to unpause it, because it shouldn't be in plane anyway. And we're going to assign our three crosshairs. So normal crosshair, normal crosshair again, and crosshair overheat. And we'll click play. As you can see, it'll be bang on it middle. But it's got a box around it, let's get rid of it, doesn't look that good. So we come down and just up here we'll type because we haven't got a GUI skin yet. So we'll just put here crosshair and we'll make a new one a variable called var crosshair skin and this will be a GUI style. So 
So grab this, stick it down here just like we've done before for our styles, pour it after with a comma. Then we can go in, and click play, it'll have got rid of the box for us. Boom, so we now have a crosshair. And yes, I know it doesn't fire at the crosshair, it fires slightly to the side, but that's only because that's where our spawn point is. We will eventually make it fire to the middle. Don't worry about that, I am working on it. So the next thing we need to do is make it so every time we fire, it bumps up the overheating system. Really simple again. So we're going to go back to on-screen actions, simply because that's where our crosshair is stored. We get more control over it there. So down here, well up here first, we'll create a new variable called var overheating and this will be a flow equal to zero zero yeah so down here we're going to type if well crosshair if overheating is more than 10.0 so if it's more than well 10.0 yeah simple um we're gonna we basically need to just stop it so we're going to type um, crosshair current equals crosshairs and then we put 1 so it's set to the overheating crosshair simple enough so that'll do it it doesn't yet stop our guns but we can work on that in a minute when we fire and no that's not ours that's something I'm working on so the next step will be to slowly take it down but we'll work on that later we need to actually make it increase then stop really really easy so we're going to go back and we're going to find our player fire script space fire here and all we're going to do up here is type scripts var on screen well overheating on screen actions like we've done many many times before and we'll assign that manually just to save a tiny bit of processing power and now what we're going to do, every time we fire, we need to bump up the overheating dot overheating. So, basically down here, we'll put play.fireball skills increase, overheating dot overheating plus equals. So every time we fire one of these fireballs, it'll get quite warm, we'll say 0 0.5. So you can fire quite a few. With maths off the top of my head to 10, that would be 20 fireballs would overheat you. So that's perfect. However, two fireballs, double damage, one. So it increases a bit more. Scientifically, I'm guessing that would be something higher because it's... I don't know. Just... Apologies for that, that was my vest again. So it always chooses when I'm in the middle of unity. So we've done that, that'll overheat, but we've still not said if it's more than, then do it. So we can change that. So up here, across here, we're going to type var overheating max. And this will be a flow equal to 10.0. And the reason we're doing a max is because then every time we want to see you get some a better hull, so your weaponry can now last much longer in battle, then you're going to have to change if we didn't have that overheating down here which we're just going to replace with maps space fire here well when we do it and then anything else we do which is not very well good so play fire down here we're going to type above all this if overheating script dot overheating is more than or equal to so if it equals 10 in fact we'll just send more than if it equals 10 you're okay but very dangerously close if it's more than overheating max but over script so if basically jumping over to another script if overheating is more than overheating max which is 10 then you can't do it however that currently says if it's thing here we'll just put less than so if it's less than 10 you can fire otherwise you ain't firing so it's really simple to do so if we try that we fire so many it won't work after a while and as you can see we never assign the variable clever us so we'll go back and then we'll get character and we'll stick it on none of these because it's the wrong one we'll get the GUI scripts and assign it to overheating script and click play
So we fire, and you'll see on the duet scripts, it goes up. So let's fire 19, so that was 1, 18, 19, 20. I was a little bit off, but we fire again. 9.5, we fire one more, and one more again. And now we can't fire. It's completely froze, which is a good thing because it means that it's overheated, which is perfect. But it's not more... The reason it's not changing the icon is if we come down here, if it's more than or equal to overheating max, it'll come down, read it, blah, blah, set it to update, overheat. So we'll try that again, and then I'll speed it up. As you can see, by shooting, when we had that equals, we now got the overheating cross here. You can't do anything. So what we need it to do is to recharge and then update. So it cools down, boom, it's back on. And then what we could eventually do is add like a frost zone, so, um, I don't know, cools your jets using liquid nitrogen, minus five seconds or something. Yeah, seems good enough. So, if crosshair is more than that, then it's frozen, so we need to create a new variable. Up here, we'll type private var timer, well, we'll just put overheating timer. And this will be an int saying 2000. So you ha if you use up your weapon, you do have to wait. So put overheating timer minus equals 1. And then if overheating timer is less than 1, so if equals 0. We've done this timer many, many, many times before. So what we need to do is reset our crosshair current to the correct crosshair, which should be 0. And then, our last one is to set overheating to zero. And that's it. Really, really simple. That one little bit there. Um, the load of variables up there. And this little bit here. Creates an overheating system for your guns. So you fire too many times, it'll be like, click, click, won't work. And then, it'll recharge and then play. But I've discovered an issue. The timer we've never reset. So once we do it again, it'll mess up. So down here, we'll just set the timer to 2000. And I'll unprivatize, in fact I'll keep it privatized. There we go. So that's it, we've got to reset the timer there. We go back, click play. So we turn around, we fire. Oh no, we can't fire. The timer ticks down, I'll just speed this back bit back up. As you can see, it's took itself down. You do have to wait quite a bit. Now we can fire again. We'll just turn it to 10. It'll overheat. It'll tick down. We'll be able to fire it again. Works really, really well. Thank you for watching. Um, really simple. One GUI script. And, sorry again, I forgot to zoom in. And a little if statement on both of these. Works really well. And see you next time.